Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. I am Carolyn Byers, the Education Director at Madison Audubon, and today I'm here to talk to you about bird call ID, or bird songs, <laughs> whichever you want to call it. Um, usually, I am out in the community teaching kids and adults, usually in person, um, and I usually see about 200 to 300 kids a week. and. It's really fun, but it's just not possible right now. So instead, we are putting all of the content that we can online. Um, our governor wanted us to stay safer at home, and so we made some web pages called Safer and Funner at Home. So you can find those at madisonaudubon.org and click on the page that says Safer and Funner. And you can find all sorts of games and activities and all of the other video lessons that I've done right there. So share them with anyone who needs a little bit more nature in their life, which I think is all of us right now. Um, so I am gonna be teaching you about bird calls today. And this is a lesson geared mostly towards kids or people who um, don't know many bird calls yet. So a lot of the ones we're gonna be doing are pretty common birds, which is awesome because everybody needs more common birds in their life too, <laughs> at least I think so. Um, so if you're a more advanced birder, please watch along with us, but I don't want you to be disappointed that we're not doing any crazy warblers today. Um, so today also, I'm gonna be doing eight minute notes at the end of my lesson. And if you've watched other lessons, you know that this is just a way to jumpstart your nature journal and a way to keep kids practicing writing and um, thinking a little bit more critically during this time. So if you wanna join in on eight minute notes, at the end of our lesson, you're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or whatever you want for writing, okay? Um, yesterday, I also want to share that we did a video on bird identification using field guides, um, and it was a lot of fun, and that is available on our website, or if it's not right now, it will be very soon, <laughs> so we'll, we'll make sure that's up there at the end of this lesson, so check that out too. It was a good time. Um, all right, so birds mostly look pretty different. Hi everybody, it's good seeing you all checking in. I like it. Um, I suppose I should also say hi to all the kids that I usually teach too. So if you are a kid from Lincoln Elementary or Midvale or Muir or uh, Mendota, hi. And if you are a kid at one of the community or neighborhood centers in Madison, um, like Veracourt or Goodman or Salvation Army or Lucier or Bayview, Hi, I miss you, and I'll see you soon in person. <laughs> All right, so let's get let's get back to what we were what we're talking about now. Um, we are going to talk about bird calls today, and a lot of people think that the best way to identify birds is by looking at them, and that's true. It's a great way. Um, most birds look pretty different, and they have a lot of different um, body shapes and colors on their body, and so you can tell a lot about what the bird is just by looking at it. Um, but birds also make very different calls. So almost every bird has a pretty unique call. So if you get really good at learning bird calls, you could walk around with a blindfold on and you could, um, you could identify all the birds that are around you if they're making noise. And Madison Audubon also partners with the Wisconsin Council for the Blind to lead a field trip teaching people with different visual abilities to identify birds by sound. So this is a really great birding tool for everybody. Um, it's awesome. And the scientists use birding by ear a lot because you can focus on writing down what you're hearing and you don't have to spend as much time looking around with binoculars. Um, so birding by ear is important for scientists and for birders and just for people in general. It's good. Um, so we, I bet a lot of you already know at least a few bird calls. I did this yesterday when we were trying to identify birds by sight. And I think when you really think about it, you know more birds by sound than you think you do. So um, a lot of people, let's, let's think about the birds we know right now. And if you know some, you can type them in and I'll, I'll read them off in the comments too. Um, so 
Chickadees are a pretty common bird that a lot of people know and love, and they're, they hang out around bird feeders all the time, and most people know those calls. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a lot of bird calls <laughs> using my voice, but also the computer next to me. Um, so chickadees, they say chickadee dee dee dee, right? Or they say dee dee. So I bet a lot of you know about a chickadee. Okay, um, let's think about another one. How about a crow, an American crow? Everybody knows that crows say caw, caw, caw as they're flying around the neighborhoods. Uh, they make a lot of other noises too, but I bet most people know what a crow sounds like. Um, how about a blue jay? They say jay, 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 jay. Yep. Mm -hmm. I see people writing in the comments. They know red winged blackbirds, eagle, crow, cardinals. Yes, totally. So there are two, at least, oh, there's at least two that we know. Um, how about an owl? Um, maybe you don't know which kind of owl it is, but a lot of people are able to identify that it is an owl calling. That's pretty neat. So we definitely have at least five birds in the comments now and what we just talked about that most people probably know. And that's a really good starting point. Once you know a few bird calls, it gets easier to learn more. All right, so some ways that people in general learn bird calls is by listening to them over and over and over again. Um, and you can listen to them online. They make, they still make CDs with bird calls on them. Um, and I will make sure to link below, um, a good, a good spot for that. I like the, uh, National Audubon website or the Cornell website for listening to bird calls. Um, they also make a lot of really good bird apps, and many of them have bird calls right in the app. Um, and I like the National Audubon one for that, not just because I work for Madison Audubon, but because that one doesn't use any data. Once you download it, all of the bird calls are right there in your app, and uh, that's nice when you're in a remote area without my internet is a little bit goofy right now, guys, so if I blink away, please don't leave. I will be right back, promise. Okay, um, so I like that app because it doesn't matter if you're in a remote spot, it's already downloaded and you can just keep on birding and using your bird app uh, to identify calls. Um, I really like watching birds sing and trying to listen to what they're saying. Uh, not listen to what they're saying, but if I watch a bird make the call and I see it and I see its mouth open, um, that helps me remember what it is a lot more than just looking at it on a computer and listening to it. So that's a good, good way to remember. And then the really fun way to remember what bird calls are is to use what's called a mnemonic. And a mnemonic is a way to put human words, and in this case, English words, um, alongside the bird call, and the human words sort of sound like the bird call a little bit, and it helps you remember it. So for example, um, anyone who watched our All About Owls video knows that I really like to make owl sounds with my own voice. So the barred owls mnemonic is, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And so if you make it sound like an owl, it's more like But do you hear how the human words sound a little bit like the owl words? So who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Okay, so we're going to talk about mnemonics today. And the really neat thing about mnemonics is um, there are some common ones that a lot of birders use, um, like the who cooks for you one, but you can also make up your own. So my mnemonics for some birds are different than other mnemonic or other mnemonics people use. So if you don't like the one that I'm saying, make up your own. Or if you hear a bird and you don't know what it is, but you're trying to remember what it is, make up your own mnemonic for it. And then maybe when you get home and you can look it up online, that mnemonic will help you figure out what you were hearing, okay? All right, so I think, oh, there's one more thing I wanna talk about. One more thing um, before, before we get into the birds. So birds are um, usually placed into groups by scientists, right? There's lots of sparrows, there's lots of owls, there's lots of ducks, um, and those groups often sound very similar. So if you know what 
one sparrow sounds like and you hear one that you don't know, you might be able to figure out that that unknown bird is a sparrow just because it sounds like the other sparrows you know. So it's really helpful if you learn a few different bird calls from each of the groups and then you'll be able to narrow it down a little bit better, okay? Um, yeah, let's get started. Let's start thinking about some birds. Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm so ready. Um, so the first bird, the first bird song that I wanted to show is a American Robin. It's a really common bird. And I'm gonna be using our Madison Audubon Bird Guides for Kids to share the photos with you. And this is now online for a free download. And we have one version that's really good for looking at on a screen and another version that's good for printing. Um, and I know that I am low on ink. <laughs> So if you are too, um, as soon as things start opening up again, we are going to be ordering some that are printed that um, will be selling for just the cost of printing. So keep an eye on our um, on our website and our social media if you want to get a copy of Madison Audubon Bird Guides for Kids. But until then, go download it. Um, and I think we're going to add that a link into the comments so you can find it really easy. Okay, so our first bird is the American Robin. And this is a really common bird in neighborhoods. It's got that red belly, gray back, black head if it's a male. Um, and it's really easy to see and hear, even if you have to stay inside. Um, and so I'm gonna be playing songs on my computer. Sorry, I'm looking away, I'm very distracted. But I'm gonna play the song first and then I'm gonna share what the mnemonic is and then I'll play it again, okay? So here's the song of the Robin. All right, so they are in the thrush family. So thrushes are often described as sounding flute-like. Um, they're very melodic. And the robin, I always think of it like the sound goes like this. It's very bubbly. And the mnemonic for them says, cheer up, cheerly, cheerly, cheer I, cheer up, cheerly. Uh, so I'll play it again and see if you can hear it saying, cheerly, cheer up, cheery, cheer I. Can you hear it? Cheerly, cheer up, cheero, cheer I. Excellent, oops, I started again. All right, so we have the American Robin there. Um, let's see, let's do another really common one next. How about the chickadee, the black cap chickadee? And, oh, my internet's moving a little slow. Come on, chickadee. <laughs> Okay, are you ready for a chickadee? Um, let me find it in here. Here is our black cap chickadee. This is another bird that's really common in neighborhoods and also in really wild spaces. So this is one you could probably hear even if you can't go outside right now. So here is the song of the chickadee. So a song is categorized as um, noises birds make either to attract mates or to tell other birds that this is their territory. And so this is one of, that's just one of the kinds of vocalizations birds make. Um, they do calls, they do alarm calls, um, all sorts of things. But the chickadees, their mnemonic for their song is dee dee. D, D, and that's not really human words, but it's a way to remind you what they sound like. So I'll play it again and see if you can hear them saying D, D. Yes, and that is one of those sounds that it's, uh, it means spring to me, even though they usually start singing that sometime around February when there's still snow on the ground in Wisconsin. But I really like it. Um, so chickadees also kind of say their name. They say chickadee dee dee. So I'll play that one next. Chickadee dee dee. Mm-hmm. 
And actually, the more Ds they add, the angrier they are. So I have done some bird banding, which is where scientists catch birds in a way that doesn't hurt them, and they put a little metal band on their leg so that they can uh, get data about them later and learn about really where they're going and what they're doing. Um, and so when I was banding chickadees, they, they weren't hurt, but they were sure grumpy about it. <laughs> and so when I was holding them, they would say chickadee dee 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 over and over and over again. So I'm going to play the chickadee call one more time, okay? Chickadee dee dee dee. Nice. Okay. I'm going to start going to find another bird. Okay, this bird, and while my internet is trying to find it, I'm going to show it to you. Our next bird is a blue jay. I love them. They're so feisty. This bird is a member of the corvid family, and so they're related to crows and ravens and all sorts of other jays. They're very smart, um, sometimes too smart. <laughs> Um, but they make a lot of noises. Um, and this blue jay, of course, they make, um, they make their, their jay calls, right? They say, jay, 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 jay. Yeah. You can also hear it clicking in the background too, going... Okay. But they also make a sound that is, some people use the mnemonic queedle, 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 or it sounds like a swinging gate, like a, a little rusty gate swinging open and shut. Let's see if I can find that one. There we go. Queedle, queedle. Yeah. Maybe I should show you the picture because it helps if you're looking and listening. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so they also sometimes mimic other birds. And this is where birding gets really fun and also a little bit complicated. So there are some birds that can mimic other birds, meaning they can copy them. And blue jays, um, they, can mimic, they can mimic other birds. So here is what it sounds like when a blue jay is pretending to sound like a red-tailed hawk. Ready? All right, and I'm gonna do the red-tailed hawk next so you can hear what that sounds like. But they sort of still sound like a blue jay even though they're making a red-tailed hawk sound. It's kind of like if you were to pretend to say something in your mom's voice, you know, or your dad's voice. You can tell you're pretending to be them, but they still know it's you because you sound like you all the time, right? Um, so I'm going to go and play, how about I play the blue jay making the red-tailed, uh, oh, it's a red-shouldered hawk. Hmm. It still sounds like a hawk, though, so I'm going to play the red tail next. So remember this sound. This is a blue jay pretending to be a red-shouldered hawk. Now I'm going to go find a red-shouldered hawk. Even though we don't have those a lot in Wisconsin but I'm gonna find one so that you can listen to it. Here it is. It sounds almost exactly like what the blue jay was doing a second ago. That's so cool. Oh, birds are neat. All right. So I'm gonna find another bird to share with you another corvid. You remember the word corvid? That was the family that blue jays are in. So this is our other corvid. This is the American crow. I'm sorry all the words are backwards right now, but trust me, that's a crow. <laughs> and this bird does a lot of vocalizing. Um, so I'm going to play the caw first. <sighs> I love that sound. <laughs> um, and crows are really, really special to me because 
they help me find hawks and owls. I mean, I like crows on their own. They're really cool. But um, hawks and owls often try to sneak into a territory very stealthily because they either don't want to be disturbed or they want to do some hunting. And when a flock of crows find this hawk or owl, they'll mob it. And what they do is they fly around it and they crow really loudly. And sometimes they swoop down and try to hit the hawk or owl with their, with their feet. And what they're trying to do is um, first blow the hawk or owl's cover so that all the other animals in the area know that there's a hawk and owl there. Um, and so when they lose that element of surprise, they're not as good at hunting anymore. Um, and they also are trying to drive that hawk or owl out of their territory. So whenever I hear crows getting really upset, I always try to look at what they're upset about too. Um, Ooh, somebody says they're loud and they scare my cat. They scare my cats too, but I keep my cats inside and then I don't have to worry about them. Um, somebody else asked, are there good websites for listening to all these things? Um, and yes, there are. I talked about them earlier, but I'm going to say it again because it's awesome and important. Um, the Audubon website, audubon.org slash field guide. Um, if you just Google a National Audubon and American Crow, it's going to bring up the page that they have for the crow. And down near the bottom, you can play all the bird calls that they have. Um, Cornell also has uh, a lot of bird calls on their website. And there are tons of apps too. So check it out. There's a lot of places to learn bird calls. Okay, let's listen to, it's called Karak and Bell Calls. So I want to hear what that sounds like. These are the American Crow sounds. So cool. So neat. Very cool. I like the nasal calls. All right. And I want to listen to what rattles sound like. <laughs> Very cool. I hear those outside sometimes too. So there are people who study what these calls might mean for birds because um, bird communication is a really cool air. It's, it's a really cool thing to learn about. And I am not an expert on bird calls. Um, I am more of an expert on grassland bird nests. But I know that um, somebody, there is a scientist who probably knows when crows rattle and when crows use the karak and the bell call. Um, so you can definitely find out more about that if you want to. Okay, so we've done the chickadee, the robin, the blue jay, the crow. How about another one? Let's do... Let's do another feeder bird, a bird that you might see on your beard feeders. Okay, so while my internet's finding that, I'm going to show you a picture of one. This is a bird that's a little bit more rare at bird feeders, at least in Madison, and it's a pretty nice one. I like it. So this is a tufted titmouse, and they have a little crest on their head that they can raise up and down, um, and they have a pretty long tail, nice little black stop, like black spot on their forehead, black eye. And let me play their call for you. And Joe wants to know what sound a parakeet makes. That's a fun one. You should look that up or Google it. Um, I, I don't know if they're actually on these, um, these web pages because they're not supposed to be native to um, North America. Maybe I'll check it out at the end. Okay, so we have a tufted titmouse song. Ready? Here it comes. So this one is high and whistly. And they say, Peter, 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 Peter. I'll play it again. Peter, Peter, Peter. They're really neat. Okay. Um, and they also say some other things. It looks like there's there's one that says CCC calls. Let's see what that sounds like. C, 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 C. Did you hear at the end they made a little chickadee noise? 
So tufted titmouses are pretty closely related to chickadees, and they also hang out in what's called a mixed flock. So when they're traveling around neighborhoods or through the forest, um, the chickadees will hang out with titmice and also nuthatches, lots of little birds that hang out together. Um, and that might be why their calls sound similar, or it might be that they're pretty closely related. But let's listen to that again. Nice. And people are asking for yellow finches and cardinals. We'll get there, I promise. <laughs> All right, so next on my list is a bird that I have already mentioned. Cool. Thank you for being patient while I typed them in. It was too many to have them all preloaded on my tabs. It would have been very confusing. Okay, so this next bird I want to share with you is a white-breasted nuthatch. This is another one you can see at our feeders. Um, and it has a white breast and a blue wing and a nice little black cap on his head. The females have a grayer cap. Um, and this is another bird that... You uh, my video feed was interrupted again. Sorry. Internet's hard. Um, this is another one that you can see both out in really wild woods or at your bird feeders. Okay, so here's the song of the white-breasted nuthatch. I don't have a mnemonic. I think it sounds like they're laughing at you. <laughs> I think they have a nice little, like uh, a tinny sort of voice. Um, let's see, there's another one called, um, it's, it's a yank call. And this one I think sounds really accurate. It sounds like yank, 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 yank. This one's a little faster. That's a cool thing I was gonna talk about later. I just said that this one sounds a little faster. Um, so birds have dialects just like humans do. So in the United States, for example, people in Boston talk really differently than people from Wisconsin. And people from very far south talk differently than people in the north. We can all understand that it's English um, and we can, for the most part, communicate pretty easily, but we know that they sound a little different. Um, and birds are the same way. So a bird of the same species singing in one area of the country will sound a little bit different than birds singing in other areas. And that is super cool, I think. Um, let's see. Let's play another one of those yank calls to see if it sounds different. That's more like what I know. Yank, yank, yank. Very neat. Okay, so that was the white-breasted nuthatch. Okay, when, this bird is one of my favorites. It is a mimic, and it's one that you can see mm, not as much in neighborhoods unless you have some big trees and shrubs around, but you can definitely find them in parks. So I see them all the time at Picnic Point or Pheasant Branch, Cherokee Marsh. Um, they're... They're really lovely. Let's see if I've got a picture in here. I'm not sure it's in our field guide because they're a little, um, maybe not quite as common. Oh no, it's not in here. To the Petersons! <laughs> Let's find it in here. And I hope I can do it quickly. There's a lot of birds in this book. Got it. Okay, the next bird I'm gonna show you is the gray cat bird. So this bird is about the size of a robin and it's gray. It has a dark gray cap and it has rusty underpants. It's not actually wearing underpants, but where the underpants would be is like a, a brownish reddish color. So people say that look like they have rusty underpants on. But these birds are mimics, meaning they can copy the sounds of other birds. Um, and so I'm going to play it. And it's kind of neat because just like the blue jay who is pretending to be a hawk, um, they, you can still tell they're a catbird because it sounds like their voice. But you can also pick out all the different birds that they're copying. So it's really fun to play 
who's the catbird copying? They sound very chatty. <laughs> Okay, but the really neat thing about the catbirds is that they make what's called a mew sound, and it, it sounds like they're meowing. That's how they got their name. So they say, meow, <laughs> in, uh, in, in between all the other bird calls. Um, someone just said, I thought the only bird who copied was the mocking jay. And actually, we have a mocking bird, and we have a blue jay, but the mocking jay is uh, uh, a fictional bird <laughs> from a book. Um, but the, the mockingbird does mimic, so does the brown thrasher and the catbird. And actually, I have a picture of all three of those. They're all on the same page. So the thrasher is here, and you can see those in, in and around Madison and Wisconsin. Uh, the catbird is here, and the mockingbird is here. Mockingbirds are a bit more rare in Wisconsin, but you can still see them. Um, and all of them mimic in slightly different ways. Um, so the, the thrasher usually repeats the bird that it's mimicking twice. So it'll do like blue jay, blue jay, cardinal, cardinal, robin, robin, that sort of thing. Um, and the catbird usually only repeats it once. The mockingbird repeats it many, many, many times. And other people are typing in other birds that mimic. There are other birds that mimic for sure. Those are the big three in, um, in the United States. Uh, starlings also mimic, um, you know, the blue jay does a little bit. So we have, we have a fair bit of mimicry. <laughs> so you gotta, gotta be careful if you're IDing a bird by call. Um, all right, so we did the cat bird. How about we listen to that again? Because we only heard that once. So let's listen to some, me some muse and then um, I'll play the song again, okay? That's a good meow. Oh, my internet, I'm back. Okay, I'll play this song one more time. There's a, a blue jay in there. Nice. Catbird, one of my favorites. Okay, I'm gonna get the next bird up and ready. And then I'll find it. This one I know is in our little bird guide because they are really common. You can see them both out in forests and at feeders. This is the Northern Cardinal. This is what the male looks like. He's a bright, bright orange. He has a black face and he has a crest and a bright orange beak. And the female has the same body shape, same crest, same shape beak, same color beak. That's really important too. Um, but she is more of a, a brownish blushy color. And I think they look beautiful. And actually when she lifts her wings, her armpits are this great salmony pink color that I just love. Um, so both male and female cardinals sing actually. Males do a lot more singing, but females sing too. And I'm gonna play it for you. I promise I'll play it for you. Hold on. All right, here we go. <laughs> so that's interesting. This call is a lot different than what I usually hear. So let's play another one and see if that's different. That's a little closer. There we go. So the mnemonic I know for the birds that I usually hear says, Wachir, Wachir, chip, 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 chip. And the first one I, I played sounded a lot like, yeah, like a car alarm. Somebody just posted that in the comments. And it sounded like they were doing a lot more of the Watch here, watch here. Oh, someone said it sounds different in Iowa. Yeah, birds have different dialects. They sound different wherever they are. Um, so um, cardinals can make a whole lot of different sounds. Um, and so 
honestly, I, I am a pretty good birder and I know a lot of bird songs and cardinals trip me up sometimes. <laughs> so, um, cardinals, they're, they're just, they're tricky. They make a lot of sounds. Let's play another one. See if we can get some more people who say, yeah, that's what I hear at home. Here we go. Okay. Am I back? I think I'm back. Sorry guys. It's hard. Um, all right. So we have quite a bit of cardinal calls there. You'll have to check them out more. Okay. Next, I'm going to do a fan favorite. Here we go. Let's go find it. Uh, this is a bird that, so I said the chickadee means spring. Chickadee means almost spring to me. Um, this bird means spring is almost here. <laughs> it's still not quite spring because they still come back when it's snowing. But this bird makes me know that it's really, really close. Um, let me get a picture for you. I'm going to play you a red winged blackbird. This is what the males look like. It is a blackbird with a red patch on its wing. They also have a little bit of yellow there too. Um, and this is the female red winged blackbird. She is uh, she looks like a big sparrow, actually, and I think they're just lovely. They also have really nice peach-colored armpits. Um, and these two birds, they're nice. So the red-winged blackbird, the song that I, uh, the song that I know and love, it um, it sounds like conclury, conclury. Um, they also make a whole lot of different sounds, and I can play a few of them right now. But here's, uh, well, I hope it just says song number one. I hope this one sounds like Conklery. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. And the mnemonic that they say on this webpage is actually Oak Oakley. I like Conklery. Conklery. Let's play that one more time. Nice. Conklery. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm going to play another one. It says, ooh, male two-parted alarm whistle. Ready? Let's see what it says. Mm -hmm. They play this a lot when there's a predator around or when there's a human that maybe isn't interested in their nest but they're worried about. So if you're ever like walking on a bike path or walking on a trail out in, the, in a prairie and you hear that sound, um, you're probably near a nest and you probably shouldn't look for the nest because if the birds are making that noise, it means they're, they're agitated and you're very close to it. So just keep on, keep on going and uh, they'll, they'll stop calling when you get far enough away. I'll play it again. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to play another one. Oh, I want to play the check calls. Um, they say kek, 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 kek as they're flying. Kek, kek, kek. I'll play that again. You can hear it a bit in the beginning. Kek. How about this one? Ooh. A little more metallic. <laughs> There's like 15 calls under the Red Wing Blackbird. You all should go check it out. It's pretty neat. Okay, so I'll play the song one more time where they go conklery. Here we go. Mm -hmm. That's if you only know one Red Wing Blackbird call, that's the one you should know. Conklery. Okay. This next bird is another one that I see on my bird feeders almost every day, um, but I also see them out near prairies or at field edges or like shrubby areas. Um, and this is another one where the males and the females look different, um, an American goldfinch. And this is the male in the summertime. They are bright, bright, bright yellow, and it's like a, a lemony yellow. It's a very cold yellow, not a warm yellow. Um, and they have black wings with a white wing bar and a little black cap on their head. This is what the males look like during the winter. Um, they change out their yellow feathers for something a bit grayer like the females. 
And this is what the females look like. So they still have that wing bar, that white stripe on their wing, and they still have the same shaped beak as the male. They're a finch, so they have a, a seed cracking beak that's a little thicker. But they're more of an olivey brownish yellow color. Um, and let's get some songs going for these ones. Let's play this one. Mm. This one's a little chattery, a little different. Um, let's try this one. <laughs> These are not the ones like the mnemonic, I know. Oh! There we go. So the mnemonic, the easy one for this, is for their flight calls. Um, it's not the, the bubbly songs I was just playing, but when they're flying, usually goldfinches, they kind of fly a little like woodpeckers. They use the same, um, they, they flap, 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 fly up, and then they glide down and flap, 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 fly up. So they, they fly in little U shakes making dips. And while they fly, they give that um, their flight call. And the mnemonic they say here is pure TTT, <laughs> but um, I really like potato chip. <laughs> They say, potato chip, potato chip, potato chip, or pachicory, pachicory, pachicory. Uh, so I'm going to play it again, and you think about whether you think they're saying pachicory or potato chip, okay? Potato chip, pachicory. Goldfinches are the best. I think I've said that about every single bird I've played, though, huh? <laughs> Okay, so um, let's see, it is 1.12, we still have some time left. Um, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play a mystery bird. I'm gonna let you all guess, except there's gonna be a delay, so it's gonna be hard to do this. <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, all right, so I'm gonna play this bird and you guess what you think it is. And I'm being intentionally tricky here. So here it is. Sounds like something screaming. Okay, I'm gonna play it again. So that, that was labeled typical calls number one. Now I'm gonna do typical calls number two. All right, we got it over. Oh, somebody said barn owl, that is actually a good guess. Other people are saying hawks and eagles. And both are also good guesses. That is the scream of a red-tailed hawk. Let me find the picture for you. Um, here is the red-tailed hawk. Um, this is it when it's perching. This is it when it's flying. You can see it's red tail. This is um, a large hawk that are very, very po uh, common in, well, a lot of the country, but we definitely see them in Madison a lot. But the film industry is confusing people all the time because whenever there is a bird of prey on the TV, usually they use the call for the red-tailed hawk. So I have seen videos where it's an image of a turkey vulture flying and they make it scream like a red tail. This is also what they always make eagles say, bald eagles, because it sounds very tough. Uh, and so... I really like the bald eagle call. I think they should use it more. Um, and here, I will play you the call of the bald eagle next. It's very whistly. Yeah. So it's maybe not as intimidating. I can see why they might want to swap out the red-tailed hawk sound. But this is the sound that a bald eagle actually makes. So next time you're watching TV and you see a bald eagle scream like a red-tailed hawk, you know that that's a little bit of TV magic. And it's actually a red-tailed hawk screaming. Cool. All right, so we listened to the red-tailed hawk and the bald eagle. And I have a few more birds I want to do. Here is one that is a very sweet bird. 
they're all sweet, right? <laughs> Um, and this is one that is really common in neighborhoods. You can probably see it even if you can't go outside, right through your windows. Um, but it is one that some people confuse with a different group of birds. So I'll play it. And I don't actually have a mnemonic for this one. I just kind of remember that it says ooh, 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 ooh. Some people it sounds like an some people think it sounds like an owl, but it's actually a morning dove. And these birds are nice little chunky, chunky birds. They're very round. They have long tails. They have um they have they have feet that I, I just adore. Um, I when I was bird banding, I got to hold some morning doves and their their legs are just so chunky compared to other birds. It's like it's like their feet were covered in Play-Doh. Uh, it makes me so happy. But these are morning doves. Um, I'm going to play their call again so you can listen to it. Mm hmm. They do sound a little bit like an owl. Um, so <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> so listen closely when you hear it, okay? Um, what do you think? It's 116. I think we should do some, let's do a few owls just for fun. Um, I, I did a lot of owls in the other bird call uh, or the other owl class. So I'm not going to do too many, but. Let's do a barred owl and a great horned owl because those are ones you are more likely to hear in neighborhoods. All right, so the great horned owl, I'm actually gonna have to use my big field guide to show you pictures of this. Um, the great horned owl is down here. It's a larger owl, um, bigger than football. <laughs> And it has feathers on the top of its head that look a little bit like horns. They are just feathers, though. Um, and the mnemonic for the great horned owl is... Oh, my computer is still working on finding the great horned owl. Come on, Internet. <laughs> so the mnemonic for the great horned owl is, Who's awake? Me too. And they say, Hoo, 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 hoo. Mm -hmm. So I will play that for you. <sighs> I love them. <laughs> so those were two pairs singing back and forth to each other. Um, they're counter singing. So, uh, well, counter singing, I suppose, is more when um, birds in different territories are singing at each other. So this was, these were a pair of owls, a mated pair, singing back and forth to each other. And they're saying, who's awake? Me too. Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> Love it. There was also a whippoorwill in the background of those. When you get really good at listening to bird calls, you can uh, bird in the background. So that was an owl call playing, but there was also a whippoorwill that they recorded. Love it. Okay, let's do a barred owl next. Go, 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 computer. Barred owl. So the barred owl, um, it looks like this. It has a very, very round face. It has dark eyes. That great horned owl I showed you before has very bright eyes and has a white throat patch. The barred owl does not have that white throat patch and it has brown streaks down its breast um, or barring. Um, and this owl, its mnemonic is who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. And it's the one that I, I hooted for you before. So here we go, barred owl. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? And this one didn't do the all too much. Cool. 
All right, so those are all the birds that I want to do right now. And I do have time for some more, don't worry. Um, but I want to get us started on our eight minute notes, okay? So stick around, I'll, I'll still answer, answer questions, maybe play a few more cool bird calls. Um, but I want to get all the kiddos out there started on their eight minute notes. And adults, if you want to do eight minute notes too, you should, it's fun. So the first thing you need to do when you're doing eight minute notes is to take your, your paper and make a big plus sign on it so that you're divided into four sections, okay? Next thing you want to do, you can put your name on it if you want, but I imagine you're at home and not in a classroom full of 20 kids, so your choice if you want to put your name on it. But as scientists, we do want to put the date on our paper. So it is May 14th, 2020. So you can either write out May 14th, 2020, or you can write out 5-14-20, okay? There's a few different ways to do that. So once you have your paper divided up like a plus sign and you have your name maybe and your date on the paper, then we're ready to begin. And I'm going to do my best to keep track of time, but I always fail. <laughs> so um, you're going to have two minutes for each section in the eight minute notes. And this is not, not something you should stress about. So uh, you don't have to worry about spelling or writing in complete sentences unless that's something you're practicing today. As long as you, you can understand what you're writing, that's all that matters because this is for you. It's so that you can remember what you learned today. And um, if you do this out in nature some other time, it's to help you remember what you learned then. All right. So the first section we're going to do, I usually pick the top left, but you can pick whichever one you want. I want you to write about something that you learned today, something you learned during this lesson. OK, so you have two minutes ready. Go. Um, and if I was writing, I might have um, I might have written that I learned that all birds make different noises um, or that you can identify a bird only by their call or maybe that birds have different dialects. This is really neat. Um, and I am going to play some bird calls that I think are particularly awesome. <laughs> um, and the first one I'm going to do is a duck. Um, and now most people are familiar with the mallard. And when they, they, they sound like a, a typical quacking duck, they go, wah, 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 right? Um, but this duck is a little different, and I'm trying to find a picture of it. This is a ruddy duck, and the males have a blue beak and a white cheek patch, and they hold their tail really high. Um, but their call sounds a little ridiculous, <laughs> so I wanted to share it. Um, here is the ruddy duck call. I don't even know how to describe that. It's like pop, 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 meow. <laughs> I love ruddy ducks. Okay, um, the next one I'm gonna play, and you know what? I actually have never heard that in the wild. I've only heard it on um, on on the computer when I'm looking it up. Um, the next one really surprised me and this is a bird that is rare in Madison uh, let's see if I can find it quickly I might have to use the index for this one it's not one I know where it is in the field guide hmm well I'm gonna ruin the surprise it is a black vulture hmm Black vultures are on page 92. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> so here's a black vulture, um, and it has white wing patches on either side of its wings. Oh, gosh, I'm supposed to be doing eight-minute notes. <laughs> okay, I'm sure that was two minutes. So if anyone is doing what you learned on the eight minutes notes, stop. Okay, we're going to move on to the next section. This one is something that you wonder, okay? And wondering things and asking questions is a really big part about being a scientist because scientists are always asking questions and trying to find out the answers to them. And so a great way to start 
being a scientist is just to always ask questions. Um, so I want you to write something that you wondered today. And you, <laughs> I'll say you have two minutes, but really you have two birds. I'm going to go through two birds and then hopefully I'll remember <laughs> that we need to stop. So go. And let's see, I wondered some things today. I wondered more about bird dialects. I just want to know everything I can about them. I think it's so cool that birds can sound different in different parts of the country because that means that birds are always returning somewhere near the same spot um, because otherwise all of their all of their calls would start to uh, sound the same. So I think that's really, really neat. Okay, so now while you all are writing about something that you wonder, I am going to play the call of the black vulture. Uh, and, oh it, oh, it doesn't say it on here. Um, I'm going to go to the Cornell website because I know they have it. Sorry about the technical difficulty here. I really thought that it would be there. Okay, so here we go. This is the sound of the black vulture. Can you guys hear that? It's hissing and roaring. <laughs> that bird. Okay, so now pretend you're a scientist trying to, oh, I don't know, capture one to bandit or um, measure its chicks while it's growing. Okay, so this is hissing and roaring at you. And then vultures also, when they're nervous or, I don't know, feeling threatened, they will vomit on whatever is making them feel threatened. And vultures eat dead things. So imagine that it's hissing and roaring at you and then it throws up on you a whole meal of partially digested dead stuff. I'm glad I studied sparrows and not vultures. That sounds very exciting. <laughs> okay, so that was the black vulture. Now I'm going to go and find another one to share with you. Here we go. That was probably two minutes. Maybe we should move on to the next one, right? Okay, so if you're writing about something that you wonder, you're all done. You can go back to it again at the end if you want to. Now I want you to pick another box, and this time you're going to write something that somebody said. So it could be something that I said during this lesson. It could be you writing what a bird said, <laughs> maybe the mnemonic. Um, it could be you writing what you think the birds are saying, if you could translate, like, hey, this is my territory, get out of here, or I found some great food, come on over. Um, and you don't have to do this, but if you want to, whenever we're writing out something that somebody said, we put it in quotes. So have an adult show you, or maybe an older sibling, if you if you don't know, but that's two little lines um, up near the top of the words, and you put one at the beginning of what they said and one at the end, so we know that that was something that somebody actually said. Um, and then at the end, you could write like, Miss Carolyn said, or Mom said, okay? Um, so you have a little while to write something that somebody said, and I'm gonna play you this bird. Let me find it in my field guide for you. This is a bird that is common in Florida in marshes and it is a limpkin and it looks a lot like our herons. I mean it doesn't like you would never mistake one for it but they have very long legs and a long neck and a long beak and they're wading birds they walk through really tall water and they look for food with their beaks and i know that this was a long time ago oh this website doesn't have it either come on cornell here we go um i know that this was a long time ago but i still really like harry potter and this was the sound they used for Buckbeak, the hippogriff. Here it is. <laughs> I just think they sound like dinosaurs, though. So prehistoric and really cool. I love limpkins.
I would like to travel to Florida and see them. Okay, um, that is most of the birds on my list. Um, I will say that it's really interesting if you look up um, starlings online. So um, most birds in North America are protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. So that means that you can't keep them as pets, you can't kill them, you can't um, take their nests or their eggs. And that's a good thing. It keeps all of our birds safe. Of course, there are birds that you can hunt and that's okay. Um, but starlings are not protected because they are from Europe. They're not supposed to be here. And so those are one of the birds that if you actually wanted to, you could keep one as a pet. I don't recommend it. They're pretty loud. They need a lot of space, but you could. And so if you go on YouTube, um, there's actually people who do keep them as pets. And these birds will mimic human voices as well as other birds, but they mimic human voices kind of like a parrot does. And so you can look up them singing um, and they'll say things like, pretty bird, pretty bird, want to kiss? Uh, and they're equal parts creepy and cool. So check them out too. They're really neat. All right. So that is the end of my lesson. If anyone has some more questions, you can type them in. Um, I'm not going to go and play all of the different birds that you've requested just because there are so many good resources out there that you guys can go and find them and play them yourselves. And I could, I would be here for hours if I kept taking requests like that. But if you have more questions about um, where to find uh, bird call resources or how to remember them, type those in now, okay? Um, so I want to leave you with um, a game that you can play with your kids. And maybe I'll do another lesson where we all play together. But this is Bird Call Bingo. And there are so many different versions of this out there. I don't know who created the first one, um, but it's a really fun game and we play it a lot with kids in person and there's going to be a link in the comments to it and you can also find it on our safer and funner webpage. Um, and so the the document that you can go check out you can just print it out and play using that and you can print it in color or black and white but if you don't have a printer at home you can make your own bingo sheet and just write the names of the birds in and then a grown-up can play the sounds and you can uh, check off your bingo card as you play them, okay? So you don't even need a printer to play this. It's really fun. Um, and then two more things I want to say. One is if you are out and you have a birding app and you can play bird calls while you're out in the field, I just want you to think really carefully about it before you play it. Um, so if a bird is singing and you play their call and they start singing back to you, it is pretty fun, but it's also a little bit stressful for the bird um, because they think it's another male in their territory and they need to defend their territory against it. So they're gonna keep singing and maybe they won't go get as much food as they should have. Or, um, you know, there's just a lot, a lot that goes into surviving if you're a bird. And so if you're playing bird calls like that, they might be focused on that instead of trying to stay alive. So if you go out in the field and you have an app that plays bird songs, make sure you play it quietly so that only you and the people near you can hear it, okay? Or wait until you get back to your car or wait until you get home to play it. Um, that's just just an important thing we have to think about as, as scientists, okay? And then the last thing I want to say is that our education programming is free. It's free for kids at schools and community centers, and it's free online right now. So if you are in a position where you love our programming and have some, some cash you want to spread around, please consider making a donation to help us keep this programming free because everyone needs nature in their lives right now. It helps us de-stress, helps us calm down, helps us stay grounded and happy and joyful, especially when we get to go outside and see birds singing. So thank you everybody for joining me. I love doing this with you and I can't wait until we're back in person doing it. So be well, enjoy the birds, enjoy nature, take care of each other. Bye.